Hey, Warpugs. So, uh, over the course of my life, I figured out one thing about me and one thing above all. I am not suited to frontline customer service. Now, and what I mean by that is face-to-face -face customer service. Because the thing about it is, people see me and I don't know what it is, but I used to work at a Jimmy John's and I've never seen more people willing to catch five to nine years over a missing slice of salami. I've never seen it before. Now, talking to people on the phones, I'm fine. But for some reason, they take one look at me, and I'm actually six foot tall, and so I don't know what the deal is. It just triggers that part of the that part of the brain, that lizard brain in people that they've got to sit there. And for some reason, try to jump in my face, which I can't ever say ever really ends well when you're when you're trying to do that. I just don't understand why people do it. I don't understand. But even worse than dealing with people on a face-to-face -face basis would be dealing with people who are also dealing with animals. This is probably about zookeepers. If I'm wrong, this intro is completely barreled out and done. Guys, Casual Geographic, why this might be the most disrespected job on Earth, and I really got a feeling he's talking about zookeepers here. <sighs> And it's going to really be embarrassing if it's not, because here's the thing about it. Zookeepers do not get paid enough to deal with the kind of stupidity they encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you're sitting there wondering what I'm talking about, you've seen these people walking around. These people who don't have the common sense God gave an amoeba that think, oh, I'm going to smile at the chimpanzee and when it starts freaking out, I'm going to start acting all stupid or I'm going to antagonize a tiger or like the idiots that are pouring water on Mu Ding over in over in Asia right now like oh it's not moving around it's asleep you jerk would you calm down it's cute look at the cute I don't care that it's not jumping around like you think it should be doing leave it alone people and I don't mean all people but one out of 20, at the very, very, very outside minimum, is a complete idiot sometimes. I I don't get it. Warpugs, we're going to jump into this. If this is not about zookeepers, this entire intro is squash. Check the links below for Casual Geographics links. Check the links below for my links. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And especially leave a comment if you've had to deal with just ridiculous people. Let's go. So there's a lot of talk about man versus bear. Would you right. choose the man? Would you choose the bear? How about we talk about that time women chose gorillas? This is Shibani. Shibani, hi. Shibani is a 27 year old hi. living in the Hiyashiyama Zoo in Nagoya, Japan. Okay. His face card went viral and caused a direct increase in the number of female visitors. Call him George the way he had these women <laughs> curious. Last name Clooney, because that's the main guy they compared him to. Oh, and if you couldn't tell, Shibani's off. Say what? So a 400 plus pound primate with a perpetual pump. Not only yeah. that, he's a loyal husband with two wives and children. That's a family man being lusted after. Some I'm of the words used to describe him were punky, heartthrob, <laughs> metrosexual, spornosexual. I didn't even know what that meant. What in the world? Well, I even asked, quote, would you go for a romp in the jungle with Shabani? Oh my god. A sinful liaison, that's Harambe. At women hot and bothered, that's Femme Flambe. <laughs> call him Susan B. Anthony the way he had women showing up to the pole. Just kidding. Real ones know gorillas. Really? This ain't packing anything but a room. But yeah, Shabani's looks transcended the laws of nature, and if I had a nickel for every time a woman's feelings towards a gorilla made headlines, I'd have two nickels, which is too many more than I should have. Right. One woman was a frequent visitor at the Dijar de Blaidorp Zoo in the Netherlands, and her favorite was a silverback named Bakido. Up to four times a week, she'd find him, make direct eye contact, and smile. I'm not even going to explain how much of a gorilla middle finger that is. Keepers tried to warn her, but she didn't listen. Her and Bikito, they, they had a connection. Uh -huh. Oh, they connected, all right. One day, she smiled again and called him constipated because Bikito was not letting that shit slide. Bikito broke out and would proceed to put the beats on her like Afro music. And he jumped... Oh, my God. Look. A gorilla? You're not winning. I don't care how many protein shakes you have, 
how many crunches you did that morning, how good you are at Pilates, you're screwed, okay? If a gorilla decides to just beat the brakes off of you, the brakes are going to need to be changed after they're done with them. ...over a water-filled ditch to do it. Gorillas hate water. Keto was fed up. He was calmly escorted back home where he lived well for another 16 years until he passed away in April of 2023. His get back on his biggest fan slash op was immortalized as a word of the year. And the woman, who I originally felt bad for, apparently didn't get hit hard enough. So if y'all don't know, my first aspiration in life was to be a zookeeper. I even had a state-of-the-art custom- It is about zookeepers. It is about zookeepers. Because there is no limit to human stupidity. Virtual simulator to prepare. Yeah, that dream flatlined pretty quick for reasons. But this video is going to be about probably what my life would look like as a zookeeper. The weird stories, the dirty secrets, and the random oh. trivia the average person would probably know nothing about. Like, what is the most dangerous animal in the zoo? Like, actually, the answer just might surprise you. Uh, Zebra? Probably not. Born Free USA has a database Zebra? where you can look up incidents involving exotic animals in America. And if you search up animal attacks by any species in any state in an AZA accredited zoo, you'll see that the number one culprit are big cats. Oh. Because out of 101 recorded injuries, they caused 46 or 38%. Elephants were. Oh my god, no. Second at just over 17%. But if Bikitu proved anything, it's that a lot of them had it coming. Yeah, you had it coming. You had it coming. You were sitting there trying to... This idiot. If you don't know the story behind this, this idiot sat there and was trying to antagonize this orangutan. And here's the thing. This orangutan didn't have to let him off easy. He didn't get hurt. He didn't get hurt by this thing, but it didn't have to not hurt him. He just about found out the upper limit of the FAFO scale. But don't antagonize primates because primates will go primal on you and not in a way that you're going to ever enjoy. Coming, which is probably why primates earn bronze in brutality at 14%. Reptiles like Komodo dragons and bears like pandas got just over 4% each. 9% were marine attacks by animals like orcas, dolphins, and stingrays. And the remaining 13% were just other. Other being something like a kid falling into a rhino enclosure or a woman climbing into a giraffe pen and nearly getting kicked off the census. Ooh. Now, take it with a grain of salt, because I thought for sure zebras would be up there, but they weren't even on the list. Oh. And I know for a fact at least a couple should. But these are attacks. I want to know what Zuby's most likely to put a halo on my head. Well, in the same database, if you looked at every time a person got put on a shirt at a zoo, accredited or not, big cats did it over 40% of the time, with elephants at a hair under 30, and surprisingly, bears barely even scratched at less than 9%. But here's the thing, if you look at non-accredited zoos, the big cat number grows to 47%, with bears and elephants at 16 apiece. And Non-accredited. That is a big thing, because it's a wild animal. Make sure its habitat is good, make sure it can't get out, and make sure people aren't being stupid. Lastly, in accredited zoos, elephants actually took the lead at 47%, big cats were the suspect 33% of the time, and bears weren't even on the board. So if you're a zookeeper at a zoo that actually has its stuff together, statistically, if there's any animal that erases you, it's gonna be an elephant. And if the zoo's suspect, best believe a big cat might be your downfall. But also remember, if it does happen, it'll probably be your fault or your coworkers. It is definitely now, your fault. if you work fault. at a zoo long enough, eventually some animal's gonna escape, whether it's a minor inconvenience like a bunch of meerkats or a code red dead the rights and merc on site like a chimpanzee. It's gonna happen, and the best reaction- Hell no! No! No, 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 no! 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 is pro-action, so some zoos do escaped animal drills, but instead of actual animals, yeah. Yeah. One Japanese zoo will have workers cosplaying as an animal taking a cue from Madagascar and breaking out. Thank God, because I'm not even going to tell you what I thought this was. What the heck? But it's a pretty harmless <laughs> way to remind everyone what to do when an animal gets out. That being said, this would be a tragic time to not be sober at the zoo. Right. What animal's the most likely to escape? In my non-professional online opinion, there's two. If you want to test how good a spot is at keeping the animal in, you should probably hire the man of the forest 
or the orangutan. No, oh, so okay. Manchu was an orang that Man. nearly got an entire staff fired because there was a solid week where they would show up to work and the entire orangutan posse would be posted up outside. Nice. About a week was how long it took for them to realize that Fuet snagged a wire, hid it in his mouth most of the day, and used it to pick his enclosure lock when no one was looking. <laughs> and Ken Allen was a hairy Houdini who got out so many times that the zoo had to hire rock climbers to find every possible point of exit. Nice. So they didn't know how he got out and Ken for sure wasn't about to tell him. And what did he do with all this freedom? Well, when he wasn't wandering the zoo looking at animals like everyone else, he was pelting rocks at another O-Rang named Otis, because <laughs> even a 95% vegetarian can make room for beef. The other animal is the red panda. Do your homework on how hard it is to keep this red-faced raccoon in. A quick Google search will tell you that a red panda escape has made the news at least once in 1978, 2005, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2012, 2013, and you know what? Probably more. My favorite is Red Panda Rusty slipping out the Smithsonian and walking the streets of Washington, D.C. completely unbothered. So yeah, if you're not keeping a Ninja Panda or a Cheeto-flavored gorilla in check, you're gonna have a bad time. But some animals are a great time to work with, and it's often not the ones you'd expect. Rhinos okay. are legally blind trauma tanks that'll buck up to a butterfly. In a zoo, it's a two-ton Labrador with the personality of a lab dog. And they put the zoo in zoomies. Turkey vultures are unironically like precocious toddlers that'll follow their favorite keeper around and play games with them. And <laughs> cheetahs might just be the most people-proof predator of them all. In fact, almost too much for their own good. Aww. Cheetahs get treated like the doormat of the savannah, and their life doesn't become a cakewalk in captivity. Oftentimes, the overgrown house cat is too anxious to even think about making more cheetahs. So they literally have to get cheetahs therapy dogs, and I'm not kidding about that. So. Some cheetahs get emotional support dogs. So the dogs are assigned to the cheetahs as cubs, and the idea is they become a bonded pair with the cheetah seeing Fido as a role model to mirror and take social cues from. It's literal emotional support, because if the introvert cat sees that the dog isn't stressed or pressed, it allows them to chill out, or at least enough to motivate them to multiply without a calculator. And to make it even oh, more wholesome, go. a lot of zoos like the one in San Diego will use dogs rescued from kill shelters. Definitely one of the top That's five nice. animal friendships. It's not even the only I swear to God, cheetah cubs are the cutest thing on the planet. They are the cutest thing on the planet. They look like honey badgers, and that's for a reason. Only one in San Diego. This is Zari the Zebra, also from the San Diego Zoo. And this is her best friend, Sophia. You see, Zari doesn't just live there. She's one of the ambassadors for the zoo, spreading smiles and awareness. But I'm also guessing you can't really have your ambassador around other zebras, because let's just say that might not be the best influence. So <laughs> Sophia, a miniature Mediterranean donkey, and Zari's roommate and best friend. Nice. To say they're inseparable would be a massive understatement. And while I can't exactly tell you who's influencing who, just know Zari and Sophia give any cheetah dog duo a run for their money. Nice. Now, speaking of role models, have you seen this video of a panda struggling to break bamboo? <laughs> well, that's Meng Er, and. He's not struggling. The story goes, he was hand raised by humans his entire life, and while a 250 pound bear might have no problem snapping sticks, a weaker human will. Mm -hmm. So apparently years of watching his surrogates get humbled by a bamboo somehow taught him that that face is necessary to break it. You can even find That's quite literally adorable, even though pandas don't even know how to panda right videos where he breaks it, starts eating, realizes he forgot to struggle just to grimace and continue. Pandas are a lot of things, and apparently Good at Simon Says is one of them. They're also by far the most expensive animal you'll see in a zoo. Any American zoo that wants a panda will have to pay a small annual leasing fee of up to a million dollars, along with 600000 for every cub born there. Add the millions to build their enclosures and the thousands spent feeding them, and the black and white bamboo bear is about five times more expensive than second place. Oh and that's my literally God. the biggest thing alive with legs. And best believe they know it, you might never meet a more high maintenance mammal. In 2014, the Chengdu research base set up a live stream so viewers could watch expecting mother. I oh, these names are killing me. <laughs> I Hin bring another panda into the world. It was then canceled after it was discovered she had faked her pregnancy. Somehow the same animal that got its brain nerfed by nature figured out that if they can play pregnant even after the hormones wear off, <laughs> they can finesse preferential treatment. And they're not wrong, any future mother pandas are moved to a single with AC, they get round the clock care and more fruits and bamboo. Quite frankly, I don't blame the bears for working smarter. But it gets even crazier. Did you know pandas can be bougie? Mei Lun really? and Mei Hun were two pandas born and raised in the Atlanta Zoo, but were sent back to China in 2013. The only problem? They refused to eat any traditional Chinese meals, only American. 
they were not rocking with the Boa Tao. They wanted biscuits and cookies. And pandas aren't even the only ones to pull some stuff like this. Japan's Akone En was used to feeding their residents Aji or Japanese horse mackerel. But thanks to inflation, they decided to cut costs by switching to a cheaper alternative, Saba. And wouldn't you know, the penguin with king in its name was not about to eat like a peasant system, <laughs> and the artist refused to substitute. You see, that's the part of zookeeping they don't tell you. All that time spent preparing fish, slaving away while the stench of your profession dents your social life, just for an uppity tuxedo chicken to choose hunger strike. Man, you know they don't get paid enough for that. Literally the only- No, they seriously don't get paid enough. Zookeepers do not get paid enough. Flat out. Compromise was mixing the cheap fish with the aji. As you can see, some animals are way more high maintenance than others, but some are too difficult to even exist in zoos. Think about it. Think of all the zoos you've ever been to and try to see if you can come up with any notable absences. Okay, time's up. When's the last time you saw a moose in a zoo? For a lot never. of y'all, including me, probably never. You've probably seen bison, bears, bobcats, cougars. Y'all know I could speak on wolves, yep. <laughs> but no moose. Why? Moose have specific diets, they're built like a tank and of course eat like one, and really, you can do everything right, they can still pass tense. I swear to God, like, I watched one guy just literally write his express ticket to the next life when he sat there and thought it was a good idea while out bow hunting to shoot a moose at less than 10 feet. A bull moose at less than 10 feet with a bow and arrow. It's like, I don't know if he survived what happened to him next, but all you saw was that head turn around and that crown come down and just start advancing. It's like, son, you're an idiot. I hope you're not dead. But, my God, if anybody wrote their own check, it was you. In a few years, and apparently feeding an antler warrior that can't even survive a president's term is a bad investment. So are leopard seals. You'll likely never see the op of happy feet in a zoo. Narwhals can literally die of social anxiety, so they're out. Tarsiers sometimes seppuku themselves in captivity, so that's a no go. And they say dietary restrictions are why proboscis monkeys are rare in zoos. I call bull shark. It's definitely because Shinazi might be the most inappropriate animal to take your kids <laughs> to see. And yes, my head's here for a reason. I'm not about to catch an age restriction over an overexposed lipstick dispenser. Or they could just use fake animals because it's not like that hasn't happened before. In 1987, a zoo in China was exposed for painting a sun bear and presenting it as a panda. That's a sun bear, by the way. In 2018, a zoo in Cairo did the same, except they had a donkey and zebra face. 2013, and we're back in China, except this controversy was about their resident African lion. There's a lion. Did y'all even try? But by far, my favorite counterfeit creature story is... These dogs are advertised as panda dogs. They're just dogs, okay? According to Chinese state media, the zoo confirmed it dyed the dog's fur to look like pandas to fill in the blank of not having actual pandas. You know, it's cute. That dog is cute, not gonna lie, but. These people are dumb if they believe this. If I took time out of my day and spent my hard-earned money to go see a panda and got this, I'd probably go and spend more. Man, they got pandas from Timu. I can't even be mad. <laughs> so people are usually happy to see animals at zoos, but you ever wonder how the animals feel? Well, someone did. And a study from Nottingham Trent and Harper Adams University studied over 250 animals in zoos to see how their behaviors changed around human company. Using hours of observation and research, they found that the animal most excited to see people at zoos, and I really hope this is true, were elephants. Elephants showed nice. the most positive reactions to large groups of people, becoming more active, more playful, and overall seeming to have a better time when humans were around. The other people happy animals included cheetahs, jaguars, penguins, grizzly bears, polar bears, a cow called a batang. No, because your hamburger meat is like, with the polar bear, your hamburger meat is saying hey to you, so hey, no. Servals and black tailed prairie dogs. Huh. And on the other side, the animals that seemed to like human company the least were hedgehogs, ostriches, marsupials like kangaroos, ungulates like giraffes and antelopes, and probably most random of all, the tuatara. They have three eyes, and apparently none of them want to see us. <laughs> As for the rest, the vast majority of animals had no reaction. The study does raise an interesting question, and that's how the pandemic affected zoo animals. Believe it or not, some animals actually started to miss people. The worldwide panoramic left elephants confused and disappointed. Birds like kias and cockatoos missed the attention. And you even had apes like chimps actively looking for missing visitors. And while the shutdown gave us gems like penguins exploring empty aquariums, or a sea lion getting introduced to a tegu, by far the best story to come out 
was what happened in a Japanese aquarium. Okay. You see, the eels in Tokyo Sumida Aquarium were used to people, but the pandemonium turned them back people shy, and those same eels would now hide in the sand whenever a worker or someone would walk past. The problem is, that made it almost impossible to check up on them and keep them healthy. The solution was, the aquarium asked people to FaceTime their eels to re-familiarize them with people, like some exposure therapy. <laughs> there was a legitimate time where you could have gone on a date with an antisocial eel, and the worldwide Panera brought a lot of bad, but this was definitely a bright spot. But now, that's, zoos are back open. That's so awesome to get the most out of your experience. Animals are going to be most active on cooler, cloudier days, mm -hmm. and they usually peak as soon as the doors open. Also, you're going to want to aim for a random weekday, since the less crowded, the better. Try it. If you can be there the next overcast 10 a.m. on a Tuesday, I swear you'll see a different zoo. And if mm -hmm. you're a cat person, you might want to wear some Calvin Klein. No, seriously, the Klein is a favorite for cats of all kinds, from cheetahs to cougars, from lions to leopards. Really? In fact, researchers have caught wild jaguars on camera by dousing the trap in obsession for men. So next time you're at the zoo and end up in big cat country, go ahead and spritz some of the Klein and see what <laughs> happens. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. No, I imagine no, I'm no, get I'm actually okay. I'm actually okay with not doing that. I'm actually very fine with not spraying myself something that a big cat is gonna want to snuggle up to. Thank you very much. No. A couple comments disappointed to me for not blasting zoos for 15 minutes, that I can't possibly care about animals if I still go to them, here's my take. I've always said that zoos are capable of a lot of good and a lot of bad, but a lot of them are an invaluable resource for conservation and awareness. Mm -hmm. And while I agree, there are some species that are just not built for zoos. A majority of them are there because they literally would be worse off in the wild. Chevalsky's horse was basically halfway down the grave, but it was the work of zoos that helped bring them back from the brink. Same thing with the California condor, and about a dozen more. And spare a thought for zookeepers, they're overworked, underpaid, usually overqualified. And like I said, the smell isn't just something they leave at the office. Not all zoos are created equal, and it's at best lazy and at worst almost dangerous to put them all in the same boat. But I'ma stop yapping, drink water, hug your mother, support your local zoo, just make sure it's accredited. Matter of fact, give a zookeeper a hug, who knows how much they need it. And I'ma yeah. see y'all in the next one. I'm glad he didn't take, I'm glad he didn't go the zoo bashing route, I really am. Zookeepers. The good, like, there's a lot of great zookeepers, a lot of great people that just want to work with the animals, that just want to be there for the animals, and they are ridiculously underpaid, uh, considering what they do and what they put up with. Um, I honestly, like, zoos are funded primarily by people visiting them, visiting them, and while. I think it would be a great idea to, you know, do some sort of funding for them. At the same time, you want to make sure that it's not just the animals they are taking care of. You want to take care of the people that are there. Because there's nothing more irritating than dealing with people who are expecting something that they're not getting. And I, I that one guy in that bucket trying to get that chimpanzee there is no way on god's green earth that you would ever get that to be me and i don't care how much money you offered me because that chimpanzee is already agitated and that is the last thing i ever need in close proximity to me because what's he gonna do put it in the bucket with him if the chimp decides to yeet us delete us him it's gonna be it's gonna happen it's just mm. war pugs support your local zoos i mean that's really all there is to say about it. there's nothing there's nothing more relaxing in my in, in like i've been to about four zoos i think i, I think i want to go to another one. but my favorite exhibits were the big cat one even though, you know, I say you don't antagonize these things. I don't want to be around anybody trying to do that. But it's always nice to go and see. that I actually managed when I was, um, I believe I was in San Diego. And they had, like, there was an exhibit of tigers at the San Diego Zoo. And I couldn't get over how massive they were. Like... <sighs> Enough of about me. Enough about me. War pugs. All the casual geographics links are going to be in the description below. Leave a comment down below. What's your favorite animal to see at the zoo? 
subscribe if you haven't already hit the like button for me and the algorithm and join the channel as a patreon or member for early access i'm out of here i'll catch you guys next time